Welcome to our compiler course, where we'll explore the essential concepts of compilers and interpreters. Today, let's start with the fundamental understanding of how these tools operate. At its core, the world of compilation and interpretation is about translating source code into something the computer can understand and execute. It's like a bridge between human readable instructions and the machine's language. A compiler is a software tool that takes a program written in one language, known as the source language, and translates it into a functionally equivalent program in another language, known as the target language. Typically, the source language is a high-level programming language like C, C++, or Java, while the target language is a low-level language such as assembly or machine code. During the translation process, a compiler also reports errors and warnings to assist the programmer in identifying and rectifying issues in the source code. This makes compilers invaluable for ensuring the correctness and efficiency of programs written in high-level languages before they are executed on a computer. An interpreter is another common type of language processor used in the world of programming. Unlike a compiler, which translates the source code into a target program, an interpreter appears to directly execute the operations specified in the source program. It does so by processing and executing instructions as they are encountered, and it often takes inputs from the user to guide its execution. Both compilers and interpreters share a common goal, which is to convert higher-level programming languages into machine code, making the code understandable and executable by a computer. However, they achieve this through different mechanisms, with compilers producing a target program and interpreters executing source code directly in a step-by-step -step manner. Now let's break down how a compiler works. We begin with our source code, the instructions we write. This source code is processed by a compiler. The compiler's task is to translate our source code into machine code, which is a low-level representation the computer can directly execute. Once the machine code is ready, it runs on the computer and we get our desired output. This is the path of interpretation. In essence, both compilation and interpretation aim to bridge the gap between human readable code and machine execution. There are two different approaches to achieve the same goal. In the next section, we explore language processing systems, where code transforms into machine instructions. At the start of our journey, we have your high-level programming language. This is where you write code in languages like C, C++, or Java. But before you compile your code, there's a step called preprocessing. The preprocessor is a program that translates your source code into simpler or slightly low-level source code. It performs tasks like expanding and macro definitions, which are essentially shortcuts for longer code constructs. Additionally, a preprocessor allows you to include header files into your program context, which can be quite handy. Next in line is the compiler. The compiler's job is to take your source code after preprocessing and translate it into machine code. This machine code is a low-level language that computers understand and can execute. Now, if your source code was written in an assembly language, we need an assembler. An assembly language uses mnemonics which are symbols for each machine instruction. This makes it easier to write and read programs compared to those written in machine language. The assembler's role is to convert these mnemonics into machine language. Once we have our target program, there are two more steps, linking and loading. The linker is responsible for connecting your target program with any required libraries. This ensures that your program can access the functions and resources it needs. If your target program is in machine code, the loader comes into play. It's used to load the machine code into memory for execution. A compiler has multiple phases to turn your code into a program that a computer can understand. Let's explore these phases one by one. The first step is lexical analysis. In the lexical analysis phase, think of it as a text scanner. This phase scans your source code, which is like a stream of characters and converts it into meaningful building blocks called lexemes. These lexemes are then represented in the form of tokens, which are like ingredients in a recipe. Tokens look something like this, token name, attribute value. It's all about breaking down your code into its basic components. Next up is syntax analysis. In the syntax analysis phase, the tokens produced by the lexical analysis are taken as input. It's like taking the ingredients prepared in the previous step and using them to create a recipe. This phase generates something called a parse tree or syntax tree. The parser checks if the arrangement of tokens follow the grammar rules of the programming language. 
ensuring that the expression made by the tokens is syntactically correct. Moving on to semantic analysis. In the semantic analysis phase, we check whether the parse tree follows the rules of the language. For example, we make sure that values are assigned to compatible data types and that we are not trying to add a string to an integer. The semantic analyzer also keeps track of identifiers, their types and expressions. It checks if identifiers are declared before use and much more. It's like making sure all the ingredients in your recipe go together. The result is an annotated syntax tree as an output. After that, we have intermediate code generation. In the intermediate code generation phase, we take the result of the semantic analysis and generate an intermediate code for the target machine. This intermediate code is like a program for an abstract machine sitting between the high level language you've written your code in and the machine language your computer understands. It's generated in a way that it makes easier to be translated into the target machine code. The code optimization phase works to improve the efficiency of your code. It's like removing unnecessary steps in a recipe or reordering them to make the cooking process faster. The goal is to speed up program execution without wasting resources like CPU and memory. Finally, we arrive at the code generation phase. In the code generation phase, the code generator takes the optimized intermediate code and maps it to the target machine language. It's like taking the perfectly prepared dish and serving it to your guests. The code generator translates the intermediate code into a sequence of relocatable machine code instructions, which are the final steps in bringing your code to life. And last but not least, we have the symbol table. The symbol table is a data structure that's maintained throughout all the phases of the compiler. It's like a recipe book that stores all the names of the ingredients, in our case, identifiers, along with the types. The symbol table makes it easier for the compiler to quickly find and retrieve information about identifiers. It's also used for scope management, keeping things organized just like a well-organized kitchen. And there you have it, the exciting world of compilers. We have journeyed through the essential phases of compilation, just like following a recipe to create a culinary masterpiece. Compilers are the shapes of the coding world, taking your source code and transforming it into executable programs. If you find this class helpful, don't forget to like and share the video. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced coder, understanding compilers is a valuable skill. Happy coding!